Welcome to the second lecture of design and analysis of experiments. Today we will discuss principles of experimental design. The learning objectives for today's lecture are characteristics of well planned experiment, steps in experimentation, basic principles of experimentation and some other important terminology what we have not discussed in the first lecture. As I told you in first lecture that experiment is a purposeful one, there are certain objectives that to be satisfied. So, the experiment should be a very good one. By a good experiment, we mean there are certain criteria that must be satisfied and some of the criteria can be understood qualitatively, some of the criteria can be understood quantitatively. So, what are those criteria or what is qualitatively and what is quantitatively? Qualitatively means we may not be able to perform certain tests. Quantitatively means maybe from data or through st some statistical test we will be able to tell that yes the experiment is of that quality. So, quality of experiment is, an, is a very important one and as a result it must be well planned. Now, what are the important characteristics of a well planned experiment which is listed by Cox 1958? One is degree of precision. It is something like this, suppose you want to measure the length of a piece of rod, then you must measure it with precision means if you measure in repeated number of times what so it should happen, the measurement should be ideally the same, if it is 10 meter it should be 10 for all the time. But when we talk about a process for which experiment is done, there you cannot expect that every experiment or whenever you run a process, the output whatever may be the similarity level, but there will the, the quality or the response measures in terms of y that we have defined earlier, it will never be the same, means it, if I measure it a measure by tape a length 10 meter, I will not be able to measure all the, if I measure I will not be able to get all the time 10 meter, it may be plus minus 0, 0, 0, 0, 1 this side or that side. So, by precision we mean that, that the what we measure that measurement should be me with minimum error, now the deviation in the measurement should not be much. In experiment what is that, what we want to measure, we have some target, something we want to achieve, then what we are achieving through experiment by measuring the y or x. So, the difference is the error and that error should be measured very, very precisely. The error measurement should not be very, very, very much straight. Okay. So, by that is why degree of precision is one of the important criteria for well planned experiment. What is degree of precision? The probability should be high that the experiment will be able to measure differences with the degree of precision and the experimenter the precision the experimenter desires. Suppose you want the length you are measuring it should be plus minus 0 0.002 meter it should be within this. This implies an appropriate design and and sufficient replication, replication in the sense how do you know that you are you are your precision is more you require many many such um, runs and then you have many such values then only you will be able to find out whether your precision is as the, as the desired level as per the desired level or not. So, obviously, the standard deviation is one of the important measures here which later, in later states uh, time you will know that what is standard deviation and how it is to be computed. 
then simplicity the design should be as simple as possible consistent with the objective of the experiment what does it mean unnecessarily taking many factors many x and concentrating on many z also it is not desirable unless the the uh, purpose or the objective of the experiment desire so so what you require to do that's why you 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 may uh, consider important factors and variables and that are important you make it the simple similarly you will find out later on that uh, in experimental design there are different different principles that to be adopted so you should adopt the principles you design the material you, you uh, say uh, select the material, design the experiment, run the experiment in such a manner that uh, it, it should make it simple and it should be consistent with the objectives of the experiment. Absence of systematic error, experimental unit receiving one treatment should not differ in any systematic way from those receiving another treatment so that the unbiased estimate of each treatment effect can be obtained. What do I mean? Suppose, let you are measuring one piece, then second time also you are measuring, third time you are measuring, if you, are me you know that the second measurement value is uh, 5 units, then the next measurement value you think that it will be 5, 5 or 5.5, but that kind of bi systematic bias should not be there. So, it, it, should, it should not have any systematic error. Then range of validity of conclusions, the experimental results finally will be used to, to improve, improve the process or design of new product or design new service, many other things and which is, which is not limited to the experimental condition. So, what you require the results will be generalized for much broader uh, broader um, system. Obviously, consider obviously that it should not be that that vast that it will the factors and other characteristics will not match, but please remember if we do experiment in the laboratory it should be uh, it should be reproduced in the field level where actual work is going on that is what is known as validity means it should if it is applicable today it should be applicable tomorrow if it is if it is applicable in within a particular chemical process then the in the similar process in other uh, place also it should be applicable so that is what is known as the validity range of validity a factorial set of treatment is another way for of increasing the range of validity now the range of validity um, is very very important you should consider the factors in such a manner that they gives you the general general things. Then calculation of degree of uncertainty. So, the experimenter should be designed so that the experiment should be designed so that it is possible to calculate the possibility of obtaining the observed result by chance alone. And it should it should it should it, it has a it should be when you are in a position to know the what is the uncertainty level is there. So, you will be able to calculate that uh, that uncertainty and at the same time basically what happened the uncertainty will be the this will be the random only it should not be the systematic uncertainty and a, a systematic way of inducing such things. Now, for the time being so what I uh, let us concentrate on a process, it has inputs, it has outputs, it has controllable factors, it has uncontrollable factors. So, inputs x outputs z controllable factors y is your response variable that is. So, objectives will be said in terms of the problem, problem means suppose y, suppose if y is the is let it be the process yield, process yield then what you want to what will be your objective? You want to maximize the process yield, objective will be maximize process yield. 
suppose your objective is um, that quality quality of the output uh, quality then maybe you want to reduce the defect ok. So, you must know where lies the problem. So, define the problem is it a process which is consistently producing out of the desired range suppose this is the range which is accepted by which is accepted by customer and this is the range which is rejected is it producing here is it producing here or it may so happen that the amount what is produced this is basically somewhere you want this is the target 10 to the power 5 um, units, but you may be producing here. So, that means you want to increase this. So, you must know what is the problem. By saying this it is not the problem is not coming. Now, you have to know that depending on this what are the x and what are the z and what kind of inputs are there and what is this process all those in detailing you have to do. Now, I as I told you then what is the first is the problem problem is that ok it is a quality problem process is not performing as per the desired uh, specifications. Then what will be your objective improve the quality of the output. So, in this case reduce the defect or if it is a may be the if it is a dimensional variable. Uh, you, you you produce within this range something like this then then comes the select the treatments now if i as i told you in the first class that y is a function of x so this x is factor these are nothing but the these are nothing but also known as treatments because you can treat x in different ways what I mean to say uh, better better way to be say that you can treat the process by manipulating the x. So, that the output will be of desired quality. So, select the treatment minimums you select the factors x controllable factors which are important for this functionality. Then select the experimental material actually you are giving certain inputs here it may be raw material it may be a component parts it may be a patient. So, that means, when you you want to uh, design experiment this inputs is very important. That was a patient with, uh, with with certain age group is important instead of this you are you are may be choosing patient of all age, age group then the purpose will not be solved. Similarly, it, it may so happen that when you are producing a particular quality of molten metal for steel making then the then the coke what you are is your input this should have person pers certain percentage of s uh, or otherwise saying the certain percentage of quality but instead of that you have a different percentage of um, s that means it will not be correct one for experiment in the products regular production s content and maybe 30 percent but when you are doing experiment you have taken coal of 20 percent s content then this is not the correct material you have chosen so experimental material it is one example from raw material point of view there will be another components also for all those things you have to choose accordingly. Then select the experimental design now experiment by experimental design we means that how you will manipulate the process during experiment there are different kinds of designs available for a for the timing I can say that there there, there will be one factor at a time that can be all type of design all multiple factors together. Now, when if you take multiple factor together you may you may, may go for all labels of each of the factors you may go for uh, some label of different factors. For example, the reaction time in the earlier example we have given it is varying from it is it is varying from uh, 80 80 uh, 80 minute to 90 minute in the process chemical reaction case. So, but but what I mean to say here that so, experimental design. So, what I mean to say that 80 minute, 80 minute change, but somebody someone may choose 3 levels for 3 levels for someone may choose 3 levels for this one that factors that particular factors. 
okay so similarly temperature it you may choose oh, 170 to 180 you may choose that 150 170 no, there are different levels will be there. those things will be discussed later on but for the time being you please understand that the treatment or the uh, controllable factors x that how do you choose how do you set the different levels for x by label we mean that if, if it is a temperature it can be continuous variable any value possible but most of the time it is not possible to consider all the values uh, all, all combination you may choose a, choose a low or medium and accordingly uh, there may be your factorial design. Now, if you choose the factorial design one kind of result, uh, data you will get if you use factorial design with some other ad additional con constant like central points or you may go for mixture design depending on the depending on the requirements you have to choose the design experimental design will be taught to you in subsequent classes. Select experimental unit and number of replication very important experimental unit and number of replication. So, I will tell you uh, in the principles of uh, DOE that what, what do we mean by replication. Then ensure proper randomization and layout. So, please keep in mind this word one is I told you replication. another one now we are saying randomization so i will i will explain what is randomization and replication uh, with some example and then you you ensure proper means of data collection so if it is experimental it is a manual data collection or it is a uh, uh, offline, online or it is a, it is a sensor based what kind of data uh, you are data, you know, which one is the best you that you do. Then once you have data out the you require to do statistical analysis. So, as you require to do statistical analysis of the data that will be obtained from the experiment. So, you should not wait till the data is available. What it is said that before the experiment as you know all the other things you must be uh, you must be well equipped that what kind of data you are going to gather out of exper the experiment and what kind of analysis will fit to that data. So, some outline you must have then you will do the experiment then after that data will uh, uh, that data whatever data you get that data you analyze and interpret the result prepare and complete readable reports. So, I am repeating this yes. So, let me repeat when you do an experiment you must be well prepared for that experiment and there are the certain steps first problem must be very much specific you have every corner uh, you know the every uh, aspects of the problem you have clear cut objectives you know what are the controllable factors and you, you 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 are in a position to select particular appropriate mat experimental material and you know variety of designs and from that variety of design experimental design you will be you will be choosing the correct one and also you know that what 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 are the experimental unit you are going to use as well as you know that what will be the number of times you will be conducting a particular set of experiments and then the experiment should not be biased or systematic it, it will be properly randomized and layout mean the order of experiment also should be randomized then then you must see that okay when you go for experiment the data collect how you will collect the data so the data collection process must be known beforehand and also once you know that what are the data that are going to come then you must be in a position to know what kind of statistical analysis to be conducted and then then what will happen when you conduct the experiment after that you will choose the appropriate te statistical techniques for the experiment. For example, if you are interested to compare to the performance at two different treatment levels t statistics is sufficient, but if it is more than two three or more you require to use ANOVA. So, that means you must have that much understanding that what kind of data are going to be generated through the experiment. Then you will analyze the data and analysis things will be told to you later on 
and then obviously the results must be interpreted and you please think, keep in mind that it is a statistical issue. So, your thinking is statistical, your interpretation must be statistical and from the statistical thinking to practical problem solving that much that type of mindset you must have. Then prepare complete and readable reports the entire experimental reports. So, as I told you that the um, uh, fine the steps are known, but at the same time you please understand that the, there are certain principles which are to be fulfilled otherwise your experiment will not be considered a correct one or good one and we always will be subjected to error which are not acceptable unacceptable, unacceptable errors. So, the three most important principles of experimental designs are randomization, replication and blocking. Okay. I, will, I will first read out what is the randomization, then I will try to explain with an example. Randomization a statistical tool used to minimize the potential uncontrollable biases in the experiment by randomly assigning material people order in the experimental trials to be conducted. What is the purpose? To remove bias and other sources of extraneous variation which are not controllable. So, another, another advantage of randomization is that it forms the basis for any valid statistical test. Let us consider uh, this example that reaction time the chemical process reaction time vis a vis temperature and obviously, we know that the output is y output is process yield. For the time being let us assume that you are considering 80 degree 80 minutes and suppose this is 85 minutes and this is 90 minutes this range for time and this one 100 suppose 70 and let it be 190 then in between it will be 180. What does it mean? The range suppose the operating range for the process we are considering 80 to 90 for reaction time for temperature 170 degree Fahrenheit, 190 degree Fahrenheit. Okay. Now, let us uh, suppose I, I say the treatment, treatment means how I will conduct the treat the process the reaction process. So, uh, so that I will be able to have but or I will have uh, the yield values. So, my treatment can be the reaction time at 80 degree 80 minutes uh, and 90 minutes as well as temperature can be 170 degree and 190 degree. So, I can create a combination like this. So, this is a combination which talks about 80 minute reaction time 170 Fahrenheit temperature this is my one setting. This setting is your 90 minutes 90 minutes and again this is 170 second setting, third setting it is 90, 190, fourth setting here may be your um, 80, 190. So, what I, what I mean to say here now see that means the, pro, the, the treatments reaction time and temperature there are two treatment variables that basically are factors controllable factors a treatment level is 80 and 170, another one is 90 and 170, 90, 190, 80, 190, these are known as treatment levels. Okay. So, what we say that now how do we do the experiment? You will, you, will, you will keep reaction time at 80 minute and temperature 170 you can do experiment. So, question is which one you will choose first? this one, this one, this one, this one which settings. So, settings which one first or which one second will there be any order. You cannot choose 
selectively you have to randomize it you will choose in with using certain random numbers so so that what happened first time you may do experiment here second time here third time here when in the second time may be here here like this so there will be random random order in choosing the settings at the same time maybe in a particular setting you may do four five experiment uh, four five runs and four five times 80 minutes around 70 temperature 80 minutes you will run the uh, run the process similarly here similarly here you can repeat this one for five times but you will not repeat at a time when in one go first experiment is over first second run is over like the in the same setting five times you cannot do what you require to do you again you have to suppose 5 5 5 5 20 runs will be there then those 20 runs will be randomized so that is what is you are known as random random um, randomization why we are talking about material it may so happen that the same amount of material the input will not work for everything so similar material will come and the which material you will choose that also to be randomized suppose it cannot be completed within a 8 hour period you require 4 or 5 people to do in 4 or 5 shifts so that time also that also to be randomized so it's a huge uh, issue because unless you randomize you, what will happen there will be systematic biases so you want to remove this bias okay and <coughs> and randomization also helps in this process randomization also helps you to eliminate out the extraneous variations okay and 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 as you know if you do randomization then the y the out process yield in this case this will be a random variable also because the process is randomized the experiments are is randomized all the runs are based on randomized experiment uh, outputs are based on randomized experiment so in that case what will happen whatever output you get suppose in total if there are 20 20 such uh, runs then you will be having 20 such uh, y values so all are random so that means this will follow a certain kind of probability distribution most of the times normal distribution we will find okay so randomization is a very important one Now replication. So in the previous example, you have found out four different settings: 90, 170, 80, 170, 90, 170, nine, then 80, 180, 90, 180. Four different settings. So you can at least you can conduct one experimental run at each settings. If you do do once at a time, that means you are not doing any replication. You are doing single, getting single results for y. That will not help you to find out the errors, because unique your there are many. Later on, we'll we'll know that there are many very many vari variables, uh, many labels together. So many factors together. So all those things what happen? They will their effects once you estimate with single single observation you may not be able to estimate all of them if you want to estimate the all the effects you will not be able to estimate the error so what you require you require in each setting you require more number of experiment to be conducted as i told you i have four set four different settings this one this this and this here instead of one you you conduct maybe four or five runs here you conduct five runs here you conduct five runs here you conduct five runs so now will you conduct at a time five runs here at a time five runs here no you do will not do the experiment like this here you have to this 20 experimental runs will be randomized whatever may be the thing after completion of the experiments you will find out five observation for this identical setting another 5 observation for this identical setting, another 5 observation for this identical setting, another 5 observation for this identical setting. This is known as replications n equal to 5.
So, what we write the replication is repetition of the basic experiment without changing any factor settings. These settings you are not changing, here you are repeating this again replication with randomization you will be doing. What is the purpose? To ensure a more accurate estimate of the experimental error, to increase the precision of the estimate error and to obtain more precise estimate of the effect of the treatment. Though this, uh, be, this quantitative basis all are quantitative in nature, once we complete the basic statistics part that time I will again come back and I will tell you what how to compute the accuracy, how to compute the uh, computer calculate the precision of the estimated error and how do we say that it is basically effect is uh, the uh, you are getting precise effect for the mean effect, uh, precise estimate for the mean effect that will be told to you. For the time being you understand this replication means that in every setting there will be more than one experimental runs. And by randomization, all the setting, these settings will be chosen randomly based on certain random, random, randomization scheme and also each of the uh, runs at each of the setting that will also not be in odd, uh, at a time or in sequence, it will be, it will be also randomized, random. What is this? So, <clears throat> there is a important concept called repeated measure and replication. So, I just read out what is repeat or repeat and replicate measurements are both multiple response measurements taken at the same combination of factor settings like here. These two factor setting this is first combination, this is the second combination, third combination, fourth combination. So, you are taking multiple uh, measurements, but repeat measurements are taken during the same experimental run or consecutive runs. If you do, re if you repeat here, suppose 5 times you are taking here, then you are going 5 times here, then this is repeat measurements. While repli what is replicate? While replicate measurements are taken during identical but different experimental runs which are often randomized. So, if you randomize the thing what will happen? First you run will be taken here, second run may be taken here, maybe 30th one more run, 20th run again will be taken here. So, if you choose a setting and then repeat the experimental run for n times that is repeat measurements ok or a, but if you know that there will be 20 experimental runs at 4 different experimental settings and each run is randomized in such a manner that you will know, you, whenever you choose this setting or this setting this setting this settings for the experiment it will be it will be based on the randomized scheme only then this is replication. Here one example a manufacturing company has a production line with, with number of production line with number of settings that can be modified by the operator quality engineer design two experiments one repeat and another one with replications. What is the first one repeat one? The operator said the factors at predetermined levels like here 80, 90 and uh, 170, 180 predetermined levels run production and measure the quality of 5 products, 5 different products at a particular set, settings. They reset the equipment to a new level like here and then again run production and suppose take 5 uh, uh, products of quality value. They continue until the production is run one time at each combination, all four are completed that is repeat measurement. What is the replication? The operator set the factors at predetermined levels, run production and take one quality measurement. They reset the equipment, run production and take another quality measurement. In random order, the, the operators run each combination of the factor settings five times taking one measurement at each time what I explained that is and I have taken this one from the mini tab support. 
Another important concept is blocking. We, you have heard that the noisance or noise by uncontrollable variables. Suppose you, you consider any production shop where raw materials are supplied by different vendors. What is the guarantee that all vendors are giving you the equal, quali equal amount of quality? It may not be. In that case, raw material create nuisance variable or uncontrollable variable. Sometimes suppose there are different operators of different training and uh, training uh, exposure, different uh, work experience, different qual uh, education level, but they are doing uh, working in the same machine or the same production shop. So, that also creates some kind of uh, uncontrollable or noise, controllability or noise. Suppose you want to you want to do experiment and in that case if you do not block the raw material coming from different uh, vendors or the operators of different quality then the then what will happen the whatever the error term will increase while time will increase in the sense the error value will increase so what what you require it is always advisable that you do the experiment with a set of homogeneous homogeneous material or homogeneous people, I mean experimental uh, material or experimental units should be homogeneous. If you cannot do this, then, then what will happen? The heterogeneous effect will be there and error will be more. So, blocking is a very interesting technique here, it is experimental technique. What it does? It basically uh, help in, in conducting experiment, uh, experiment for the um, homogeneous set together in the sense that uh, by breaking the experiment into homogeneous segments. Suppose a particular set of raw material will uh, will be used for all experimental all 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 treatments settings. Then another experiment raw material will come. Then uh, again all the uh, experimental settings uh, with that raw material the experimental run will be conducted in that manner. So, then we can we can have data for all the factor uh, settings for and 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 for each of the raw material group the complete set of runs are available. In that case your analysis uh, when you do analysis you will be in a position to find out the block effect or you will get the factor effect by controlling the block effect. Okay. So, the main purpose of this principle is blocking is to increase the efficiency of the of the experiment experimental design by decreasing the experimental error. Here example multiple lot multiple lots of raw material several shifts, several machines several inspectors. Another in, interesting terminology what I have not discussed in the first lecture that is known as confounding. So, confounding is a important one. Uh, it is a concept that basically means that multiple effects are tied together into one parent and what will happen that you will not be able to separate them, you will not be able to separate them. For example, two people flipping two different coins would result in the effect of the person and the effect of the coin to be two people flipping to two different coins and you want uh, you want the, uh, you this experiment you will what you will do you take the outcome into consideration and do some kind of uh, analysis and finally, take some actions. In that case what happened the people and the coin this is confounded you cannot separate out. This situation is known as confounding. Later on when you go for higher order factorial design I will I'll, I'll let you know that how the different interaction effects are confounded with uh, other interaction effects as well as with main effects. Okay. So, <clears throat> some more like factors controllable uncontrollable already told to you, response I have given you, treatment combination given you. Now, fixed effect model and random effect model. As I told you that suppose the in the example reaction time I said 80 minute and 90 minute if you fix it and do the experiment get the result analyze it this is fixed effect model. But if you allow the reaction time to be also probabilistic in nature random 
you do not know when what is the uh, re, uh, settings, but if the settings will also be probabilistic in nature. So, then what will have that then in that case uh, the uh, model what we will develop later on you will see that will be random effect model. So, it all relate to the fact fixed effect and random effect model relate to the controllable factors. If the controllable factors are fixed well in advance before the experiment and, and then the experimental fixed experimental settings are there and on each of the fixed experimental you will do the experiment get the results where y is when response variable is random, but the controllable variable values are not random that is fixed effect model. In random effect model the controllable variables values also randomly selected it will be randomly selected not fixed beforehand then that will call random effect model. So, thank you uh, and I, I have used several um, references like first Montgomery then two um, on that websites and also another book by uh, H. J. Um, Seldman who is written in 2015 experimental design and analysis. Thank you very much.